Impressive indeed. Welcome back. It is one of the great stories of the 2024 season. Jake Waterman's transformation into a Coleman medal chance, if you don't mind. And he's a West Coast Eagles player. We don't see many of them. He's stayed over for us to have a chat and join us on the couch. Jakey, welcome. Thanks for having me, boys. Great to have you. We're, as I said, it's hard to find a West Coast Eagles player, is it? Because the legend is in the chair. Is that the reason you said, I better stay? <laughs> I didn't know he was going to be on, actually. He's usually Brownie, and then got the news that he was going to be in, but Brownie for chief. Can't pick between them. No, we, hey, we appreciate you staying on. Um, yesterday was great. Your form this year has been sensational. 36 goals, overcoming you know the injuries from last year, the question mark about whether or not you'd be playing again. I mean, what do you put it down to? Um, I was able to get back. Um, after the sickness last year and have a pretty good pre-season. So I think it's all stemmed from that. A um, bit more clarity on the role, probably playing a, a bit closer to goal, obviously, with, with Big Oscar um, getting injured early in the season. I've probably played more of a, more of a deeper role in the forward line and um, more reliant upon with targets. And as things go, if you get more, more targets and shots on, um, you know, you'll, you'll pluck a couple in the end. And um, lucky, lucky enough, I've been able to convert a few. Tell us a bit more about the illness, ulcerative colitis. Yep. I hope I got that correct. Yep. But it's severe. People don't understand how bad it is, not just about whether you're coming back to football, but whether you'd regain full health. What sort of challenges did you go through mentally as well as physically? Yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a pleasant time for myself and my family. It sort of come out of nowhere and um, flew home from a, a game in Adelaide that I was laid out of and then end up spending the next sort of 10, 11 days in the hospital to find out that I had an inflammatory bowel disease called ulcerative colitis that I've never even heard of before. <laughs> and um, yeah, it was a yeah, tough, tough sort of period in my life. And um, I'm so lucky that I've had the support around me, the, the medical staff and the specialists to come in and, and put me on the right track to be able to be where I am now. So the, the symptoms you were suffering, apparently you were balled up, vomiting, severe cramping pain. Yeah, yeah, and the rest of it, it was, you know, the, the plumbing wasn't too good out of both oh. ends, but, um, yeah, lost a bit of weight uh, throughout that period and, um, yeah, quite nauseous and, um, yeah, something I'd, I'd never experienced before and, um, yeah, quite quite an uncertain time for myself and once I'd found out what, what I had, it was sort of, you know, how can I get back to living a, a normal, happy life and then once I was sort of there, started to get itchy again and the next thing was how can I get back running around and kicking a footy. Well, you're a little bit old for it, but you, you should watch the Six Million Dollar Man because you can you can be rebuilt. You lost 12 kilograms and then you've come back seemingly, I mean, you've always been a great runner, but seemingly stronger and fitter than you've ever been. What, what, do, you, what do you put your weight or your height at at the moment? Uh, about 192, I think. But, I, yeah, I, like I said, the, the, um, the pre-season just, just put me on a good path to, to yeah. come back and start playing good footy. And, um, yeah, I mean... I, it, it, you know, I am surprised at the amount of goals I've been able to kick, but um, you know I've, all, I've always played different roles here and there in the forward line, and like I said, being able to play a bit co closer to goal just results in more opportunities to be able to hit the scoreboard. I think there might be a bit of mayo on that 192, just so you can say you can be a key forward. <laughs> I don't, you wouldn't you wouldn't play on many guys that are that are smaller than you. No. You'd you'd look across at your direct opponent and see that they've got you know an inch or two on you. How does that? make you feel? Like, how do you make the most of that opportunity when you hit the hit the field? Yeah, pl play on so many stars of the game and lined up on uh, Benny Mackay um, yesterday and he's two, 200 centimetres I think mm. so he's got me comfortably mm. <laughs> so I think it, it opens up opportunities elsewhere I think, um, you know, they've probably got me in the air but um, I back myself in, in my work rate and where I'm able to run throughout a game and um, it's a long game and if I can get up and going for the whole game I think it's a bit of a war of attrition. I think my, my fitness sort of takes over in the later stage of the game but um, yeah so many um, so many great defenders out there and you, and you learn little things here and there from each one of them. We're looking at numbers there. Your improvement's gone through the roof. You spoke about playing a little bit closer to home. Is it just that simple? Is it in Oscar Allen's absence you've become the go-to man? Is that what it is? The opportunity or is there a little bit more to it? Um, yeah maybe a little bit of that but um, you know, 
you, you have games here and there, and I probably have one against Richmond where you know you, you end up just you know, clunking everything that comes your way, and it just instills so much confidence in you to be able to you know keep going out there and backing yourself in. And um, to the boys' credit, that you know they back me in every week and, and they kick the ball to me. And um, you know if you got a ticket, in, more tickets in the raffle, more chance you've got plucking one yeah. down. So um, yeah, I mean. I've, I'm not quite sure, but uh, I'm going to keep going with the flow. We're loving it. We're loving it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're a bit of a footy head, I'm told. So what's life been like? I mean, it has been a really tough couple of years for your mob. And even, you know, sitting back here on the other side of the country, you know, we can have empathy and we can look at it all, but there were times here where it was a completely uncompetitive footy club. How's that been? Yeah, it's uh, the last couple of years have been uh, pretty slim and, um, yeah, we've, we've been put through the ringer a little bit with sort of unavailability of some of our best players and at times there's, there's been some younger guys thrown out to the wolves sort of to play um, against stars of the AFL and at times we haven't had the cattle to play or compete and at times we, we just haven't been good enough so um, you know I think the the difference to this year is we're getting our best players out there fit and healthy and at their best um, that will put us in more games and be able to compete. Did you have to take on a role, though, yourself and others, to, to front up each week knowing you're going to get your backside kicked? I mean, that be, you find out a fair bit about yourself. It may hold you in great stead going forward for the group, but, I mean, at the time, how hard did you have to drive it? Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to, to find the hope and the optimism when you're, when you're losing every week. So uh, me, as a more ex experienced player now, you've... You know, you, you've got to you've got to drive that with the younger boys and um, make sure the energy's up. And uh, although that we are, we are, we've gone through some tough times and some tough losses, the, the resilience that's growing within the group and especially the younger players will, will definitely hold us in good stead come down the track. And I think we're starting to see the, the light at the end of the tunnel now. What about the coach? Because he was under you know real pressure through the middle and to, towards the end of last year. And there were questions on whether he should stay the course um, through this dip, I suppose. What did you see in him? And did you, as, as a leadership group, were you reaching out to support him as much as he was supporting you guys? Yeah, yeah, I guess. But Simo's always been so consistent in his messaging. Um, and, you know, at times last year, you, you feel so sorry for him because he's got this way that he wants us to play but you know probably with the cattle we've had out there we haven't been able to put it into to practice so um, at times it's, it's so difficult for him and um, he's come back this year so energised um, with the team and where we're going and um, I think he's gone up another level um, on, on his coaching commitment and um, yeah the energy he's brought to the group this year and the confidence he's instilled within the younger players um, yeah, as, as has showed on, on game day. Jake, I think we're all fascinated by Harley Reid. We see glimpses of how good he is. He's a young kid that's come in with such impudence, the way he plays the game. You're with him day in, day out, seeing how hard he works. What is he capable of? Yeah, um, it's hard to put a lid on him at the moment. He's just so good. I think he's played 10 games so far and he's had about sort of four Mark of the Year nominees and <laughs> goals like this. I mean, I put on about 17 leads for him. Yeah, he, just, <laughs> he, just gave, he just gave up, but... I mean, yeah, he sort of he sort of changed the club in, in a way. He's, he's provided hope within the players and, and the fans. And every time he gets the ball out there, you just you feel the fans just you know, yep. get a yeah. bit of energy. And um, yeah, I mean, he's he's as good of a player he is. He's a better person. He's just such a such a young, humble kid who's willing to learn as well. And um, yeah, his confidence is. Yeah. That's a big comment you've made. I think we all sense it that he's changed the club. So he's come in and, get, as you say, given hope to the supporter base, attracting players, memberships, corporate sponsorship, all that sort of stuff. That's a big burden to carry for one so young. But I'm really interested to hear you say he's a, he's a better bloke than he is a, a player. So unaffected, not affected, wears it pretty comfortably, got a little arrogant smirk? <laughs> um, no, I, it's, it, it seems unaffected. I mean, obviously, you know, he probably internally probably feels it a little bit, but um, the way he handles it um, when he's at the club, um, yeah, I've got to take my hat off to him because... Yeah. Um, the way he holds himself under, you know, picking up the newspaper every day and seeing his noggin on the back page. I mean, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how that how that would feel, but um, yeah, he, he's bearing it quite well. He's playing this Sunday back against Hawks, the Hawks, which will be great. In, in preparation, it's important to have, you know, rabbits. You know, the, yeah, the strong man. You've got endurance guys, speed guys that actually drive the standards. I get the sense that that you're one of those. Where do you, where does Harley stack up in in training standards and? Where, who did he lean to to learn how to prepare at an AFL level? 
Um, I'm not sure where I, where I stack up. I hopefully uh, set a good example for the rest of the playing group. Um, in terms of Harley, he trains hard, mm. and I've, I've seen him quite close to Yoey. Mm. And since Yoey's been back, we've seen his sort of return to his near best, and he's changed our team as well. And the way he's taken guys like Harley and Elijah Hewitt and Ruben Jimby under his wing, um, he's helping them grow. And um, with him signing on during the, during the week for another few years, um, he's going to have such an impact on their development. Oscar Allen came back and played his, his first game for the for the year. Uh, second, so, second. yes, yeah, so second. So he missed, he's missed a lot of football through you know the you know I suppose the last couple of years. How do you feel you two are going to come together over the next five or six weeks? It, it must be exciting for you to have uh, another wingman there to be able to you know go to town and challenge opposition defences. Yeah, I reckon he'd probably say that I'm his wingman, but um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean Oscar's one of my best mates and. Um, obviously, being named captain of the club this year is a massive honour and, and he's very deserved of it. And I know playing round one and then missing out with injury probably weighed on him a little bit as you know, a new captain wants to come in and mm. um, have a good impact straight away. But um, having, out, having him out there on the ground, we, we walk so much taller with him and um, I, I think we work quite well together. And um, He was probably a little bit rusty yesterday, probably could have kicked the bag if he wanted to. But, um, yeah, I can't, I can't wait to see what he can do for the rest of the year. Captains have to be incredibly team-oriented. They understand sacrifice. He needs to understand you're the number one guy at the moment. <laughs> Mate, you're third on the Coleman list mm. and flying. Is it, is it in the realms of possibility? W would you aim for something like that? No, I don't think so. I, I, I've never really chased individual sort of awards. And, um, you know, as, as much as it's, it's a little bit weird seeing your name up within, you know, Kernos and, and Hogan's and whatnot. It's just, I'm just taking it within my stride and um, however, goal, however many goals I kick on game day, I've got a few things that, that are intangible for me that I need to yep. do and however many goals it is. Can you five, share those? Five, oh, it's just my contest, my work rate. Um, you know, if you walk off the ground knowing you've done those two, hopefully that transfers into goals yep. for the team, but if it doesn't, hopefully I can still walk off knowing that I, that I did those two things well. And what about the old man? 177 games for the Eagles, a couple of premierships, yourself, your brother Alec have played league footy now. He'd be, uh, he'd be pretty proud of what's unfolding at the moment. I hope yeah. this is the vision where I Mount marked him. I asked for it. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't appear to be. No, nah, he's going well. Um, he's, oh, he's get back. off the ground. Oh, muddy, <laughs> give it a rest. <laughs> um, no, nah, he's coaching um, uh, the Wembley Amateurs Club with all my mates down there and um, he's getting back into footy on, at that sort of level. So. Um, no, he's always been great for me. Um, he's never pushed me to do anything. He's all, has always sort of stood off and let me come to him with advice. And um, yeah, he's all, always willing to, to to help me improve. Legal royalty there, two premierships. Mm. So you're part of a two-team town. I, I don't think, unless you live it, you can ever really understand it. But what is it like to walk around Perth, especially in the last couple of years when you've had those struggles? Do you do you hide yourself away? Is it is it a difficult place to be? No, nah, I don't think. You, nah, not, not at all. I think um, probably at times, um, especially when things are going well, it all sort of heightens mm. in terms of sort of the media publicity and that. But um, no, nah, I, I don't think. So. I think once you start doing that, then you sort sort of lose sight of who you are as a person. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's it's special being in WA at the moment. Obviously, Freo are doing so well, um, you know. But we obviously got got the wood over him in, in the derby earlier, so. Um, that was that was a special night for all West Coast fans at a at a home game like that. But um, it's uh, it's it's nice seeing Freo do so well, and uh, I think we've got him in about four or five weeks. So um, yeah, it's going to be a great match, hopefully. It's a good mullet. Who gave you the nickname G Train? Oh, I don't know. Everyone seems to give me a nickname or two, but <laughs> I'm just running with it at the moment. Mate. <laughs> yeah, you get plugger as well. Absolutely. Oh, hey, That's the one you yeah, want. That's the one you want. Called Chief, you keep kicking them like this. <laughs> I, um, I, I mean, it's been, it's, well, understandably, yeah. really difficult to get an Eagles player to, to stay over. So we really appreciate you. You mm. played yesterday. Team went back last night and you've stayed for us. So we love having you in the chair, mate. And I'm yeah, sure the brilliant. supporters love seeing you. So keep up the great work and um, good luck. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Great to have Jake Waterman.